I'll give my regards to Broadway. I'll tell them I will soon be there. Give my regards to old 42nd Street. Ta -da -ta -da -da -da. Rose of Washington Square. La -da 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 -ti 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 -ti. Oh, listen, do I have some fantastic uh, secret underground lyrics to that one. For those of you who want to know the real lyrics to Rose of Washington Square, uh, send your name and address to uh, Adult Lyrics. <laughs> it's a great to be an adult, right? Huh? Adult Lyrics, in care of this station, you must be over 21. It will be mailed to you in a brown sealed wrapper. Rose of Washington Square. And you have to do it with gestures to that incident right there. Da, 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 da. A certain, uh, let's put it this way, a certain uh, giddiness in my uh, in my attitude tonight, right? A certain uh, bon ami, <laughs> yeah. a certain uh, the hell with it all, right? Well, I'll tell you why this is. Now, I I I I, I I'm going to have to start right from the beginning. I got this card from this kid. You know, you always get this stuff in the mail. And half the time, the stuff doesn't mean anything. There's all kinds of cuckoo birds writing all the time. You don't pay any attention to that. You develop a skin like a, a rutting rhinoceros. You don't know what a rutting rhinoceros is like? Well, <laughs> I, I know of one case. A friend of mine was driving through India in a Volkswagen van. And uh, they were up in the upper Assam province, which is where uh, there are a lot of rutting rhinoceri at certain times of the year. And this rutting rhinoceri came out of the weeds. And within 15 minutes, that Volkswagen van was pregnant. Rose of Washington Square. La -da 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 -da. They're living quite nicely now. Uh, he's still living. You know, they have very bad eyesight, these rhinoceri. And uh, he and the van are still living quite nicely there in SM. And uh, they've already got grandchildren. It's been a couple of years now. Rose. And, and the thing about a rhinoceros, you, you understand that, they, that the horn of the rhinoceros is considered by many Orientals as a fantastic aphrodisiac. Well, what do you think it does to the rhinoceros? I mean, he's got it growing right out of him. I mean, you have to go and get it. He's got it. <laughs> Great big horn sticking out there. Well, so as a net result, the rhinoceros is not only extremely active uh, in, in certain areas. Uh, he may look quite lethargic at times when you see him walking around eating hay. Or, uh, you know, he's just walking around eating the peanuts the kids throw to him in the park. But when he is out in the weeds, and it's the right phase of the moon, Everything comes together. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> and what's worse, well, I, I don't know how to bring up this sensitive point, but what's worse, my friend's Volkswagen van was still under warranty. Now, you know, I mean, the guy bought the van, and the next thing you know, it's pregnant. Uh, how can he go back to the VW place and say, well, we ran into this rhinoceros, see, and now my van is pregnant. And what, I'm, what am I going to do? I mean, it's pregnant. It's getting fatter. It's got 17 little rhinoceroses that have wheels growing inside of its gut. What am I? Well, so he just gave it all up and came back home. And, and he's somewhat of a recluse now. Although I think basically all of us are somewhat of a recluse inside of our own mind. You agree with that, Sam? Right. Okay. I mean, you know, inside of every man... You know, they always say inside of every fat man there lives a thin man. Well, I would say this. Inside of every thin man there also lives a fat man ready to be released at the wave of a powerhouse candy bar. 
and a four-gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. I mean, you know, uh, give them the, get, everybody's got its price, in other words, what I'm saying, and, and <laughs> deep inside of <laughs> You're skinny, huh? You never gained weight? Well, that's because you have not yet met your, your true cosmic karma food yet. You've been lucky. People have been giving you broccoli all your life, right? Yeah, all your life they've been giving you broccoli and underdone hamburger. So no wonder you're skinny. Who the heck would eat that anyway? But let me tell you, one day you're going to run into key lime pie, which is banned in many states for the obvious reasons. There is one of the saddest things is to go down to Miami and see wandering derelicts wandering up and down the streets of Miami in the back washes of this tropical paradise looking for a key lime pie fix. And they were all nice businessmen years before. Ran Ford agencies and, you know, did the work. Okay. Anyway, the kid sent me the card and says, Shepard, I live in Darien, Connecticut, which is bad enough. I listen to you all the time. You're always laughing and hollering. Shepard, you must have some disappointments in your life. Signed, a disillusioned listener. You're a phony. You can't be always happy. Kid, don't you realize this is a case of laugh, clown, laugh? You don't think that Laurel and Hardy were always happy. Why do you think that Hardy was always hitting Laurel in the mouth? You laughed. Laurel didn't. He cried. Don't you remember? It was you that was doing the laughing, not him. You never saw Hardy laugh when Laurel loused it up again. And Hardy fell in the water because he stepped on Laurel's roller skate, right? And he come out of the water and he flicked his necktie. You didn't see him laugh. He says, what have you done now? It was you that laughed. You don't think Shepard's laughing, do you? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's you that are laughing. Rose of Washington Square. I'll tell you. Okay, all right. Every four lousy years, I get a disappointment. And it's a big one. Every four years. It happened again. I should have thought by now... I could have done something about it. Look at I'm in who's who. Do you realize that? Who's who? Of course, they have me listed as a garage dealer, a guy that sells modular garages in Cleveland. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a modular garage? That's all right. I'm in who's who. Got this show through this television. You'd think, you know, with everything, I'd have it made, right? Oh. That's the trouble with man. The more he gets, the more he wants. There was a time when I was eight, the thing that I wanted to do most of all was to be a Cub Scout. Well, <laughs> I became a Cub Scout. Then what happened? You think that was enough? Shepard's made it. He's a Cub Scout. What else does a man want? Nope. Then I wanted to be a Boy Scout. See what I'm saying? I became a Boy Scout. I no sooner was sworn in when I discovered that there were Boy Scouts and there were Boy Scouts. I mean, there were Tenderfeet and there were Eagle Scouts. I was a Tenderfoot, which is, you know, nothing. I mean, even the phrase is a put down, Tenderfeet. That's a put-down. Any Indian can tell you the term tenderfoot is the worst put-down you can give a guy. That means you, you don't know nothing. You got tender feet. You cannot stride across the prairie and fight the buffalo because your feet hurt. That's stupid. You ever think of John Wayne's feet hurting? When they call you a tenderfoot, I mean, that's your official title. It's capitalized, tenderfoot. They even got a badge that says Tenderfoot on it. So I struggled. What do you think I became then? A second-class scout. Second class! So I could 
Right then, I saw the Boy Scouts was nothing for me. Because the highest you could ever get was an Eagle Scout. And all the Eagle Scouts I knew had this uh, clear-eyed look. You know, they all look a little bit like young Billy Graham's. And I didn't. I looked like a young Mike Krivich, one of the worst outfielders that ever played in the majors. Oh, that isn't true? You never heard of him? Well, that's because he was one of the worst outfielders that ever played in the majors. Why not? Who ever heard of Mike Krivich? You would have heard of Mike Krivich if you were a Boy Scout and you got a free ticket to go see the White Sox play. Mike Krivich was patrolling center field. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll never forget Mike Krivich one time playing in a City Series game against the Cubs. He's the only outfielder that disappeared into the vines chasing a fly ball. You know, they got these vines growing out there and didn't come out. They didn't find him till three days later. It lost in the vines. By that time, there was a soccer game going on out in the field there. And they find, he came funny, come running out, and he had the ball. I caught it. Too late, Mike. Okay, all right. We've done away with the fun and games now. It's time to tell you why I am disappointed every four years. You were waiting to find out, right? All right, I'll tell you why. What happens every four years in this country? An election. And who is elected every four years? What is the office? Well, you know what the office is, right? It's called president, right? Every four years, they elect this president. Now, that's one of the things that sets our country apart from a lot of other countries. You see, what happens in most other countries, when the president takes over, he changes his title to generalissimo. And they don't elect him anymore. <laughs> I mean, so you can, you can complain about the system, but boy, I don't know what you'd do if you were under another one, or if you had the same president for 112 years. <laughs> and, you know, he comes out every time, he's got this big hat on, wears these black sunglasses, and he's called El Benefactorissimo, or some great thing like that. You know, they give, they give him the title like the Sun King. Well, uh, nevertheless, uh, every four years we elect the president. Okay, now what does the president do right after he's elected? Well, he gives a couple of speeches, all the press go, whatever he is, and they talk to him all the time, and they make all these plans, and they have a thing called the transition period. Correct? Now, the transition period means one guy who has got the mitten is leaving, and another guy who, is just, uh, who has just gotten the big checkered flag in the big four-year race, he is going to sit in the catbird seat for the next four years, maybe eight years. Right? Okay. Now, the transition means when one crowd is moving out and another crowd is moving, it's very much like a divorce. Yes, there is a transition period in every divorce where one bad news person moves out of your life and there's a period of, uh, uh, let's say, hanging loose, and then the next bad person moves in. Right? Okay, you understand? That's called the period of adjustment in uh, in the uh, marriage circles. Uh, in uh, political circles, it's called the transition period. Now, within a year, half of the people who are, you know, wildly enthusiastic about uh, Carter are going to be walking around yelling. Why? It's not because Carter did something bad. It's because events calculate it in such a way as to always cause trouble to whoever moves in. It's just like it's a divorce again, right? Okay. So you, you, you get this, this new chick, right, this new girl. Oh, I, this is the way life is going. Fact, look at it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What, what made me see anything in Emily? Well, a shrew. She did nothing but complain. All right. So in comes uh, Mindy. Second wives tend to have cute names. First wives tend to have uh, names of women, like uh, Clara, like uh, Esther Jane. Uh, many guys spent his life, uh, you know, secretly regretting the fact he didn't marry somebody named Candy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or Boom Boom, or... Uh <laughs> well, I mean, after all, let's, let's let's take a look at the names. You, you go to see striptease, you never heard one called Esther Jane. Tonight you're going to see Esther Jane uh, 
uh, Esther Jane Alberry is going to do a strip tease. You don't, you wouldn't go. You want to see somebody named Boom Boom, right? Somebody named Candy. Somebody named uh, Patchy Fog. I mean, great names like that. <laughs> so, so uh, the, the second wives tend to have cute names like that. Guys will marry uh, girls named Kathy, uh, Cindy, the second wife. That's, that's generally the second wife syndrome. And the women are the same way, you know. They wind up the first marriage is always to somebody named uh, uh, Clarence, you know, Chester. I mean, you know, you never hear of a Chester. Is there a serious actor today in the, in the movies named Chester? You can't think of one. And if it is, it's a comic character, if it is, right? Chester on the, what was the name of the show? There used to be a guy, Gunsmoke Chester. What was Gun... Was he the hero? No, he was this clod that walked around saying, Hey, hey, why, George, we're going... You know, he's saying things like, My God, we're going to have to get after him, guys. Right, star? And at that point, uh, James Arness, whoever it was, uh, got up and he jumped on a horse and he galloped away. Well, all right. Women marry, in their second go-round, people with great names like Rod... Oh, yeah, that's, a, you know, there's 15 movie stars named Rod. Uh, they married guys named, uh, oh, uh, names like uh, Hal. Yeah, that's uh, Hal. That's a, that's a typical second husband name. Uh, Hal. Well, it's only years later you discover it's actually Harold. They stop calling him Hal, you know. They say, who's that funny-looking guy whose nose is running over in the corner? That's who used to be Hal. Okay? So anyway, every four years we go through the transition period. Now, the transition period is the period... They even use uh, sexual phrases. If you notice, they say, they, they say that uh, it's going to be the congressional honeymoon. Okay, that means everything's hunky-dory while you're on the trip, on the way to Niagara Falls. On the way. It's when you get to Niagara Falls, and it turns out that the motel did not get your reservations, and you're going to spend the night out in the parking lot <laughs> with the rain coming down, <laughs> that the honeymoon starts to, you know, fall apart. After a while, she says, well, I thought you called. He says, now, look, don't use that tone of voice on me. By the way, that's exactly what he said to Esther Jane for the last nine years. He says, now, don't use your tone of voice on me. That, that tone of voice... You're implying I didn't call. He said he didn't get it. The reservation. He says, has it occurred to you that he's stupid? She says, oh, it's occurred to me, but uh, I don't know. All the while, the falls are going down there. You know, the water's flying up and down. From that point on, things are a little different. That's called the period of awakening. We will have that. And everybody, of course, will think, eh, that guy lied to us. <laughs> well, just like every guy that marries this girl who turns into a wearing blender six months after he's married, he, if he had looked at her carefully, he says she was a wearing blender all the time. And if this girl had looked at Hal, she could have seen. He actually was basically a herald whose nose ran all the time. Just no, no, nobody lies. It's just that familiarity breeds a, uh, what is it? <laughs> That's right, gang, you got it. <laughs> well, anyway, what is my four-year disappointment? Well, I'll tell you. There's always an announcement made by the president-elect. I hate to even talk, tell you this. This is, you know, some, some disappointments are so, so painful. They really are, that you don't want to make a joke on them. I'm not making a joke on it. It really bugs me. Seriously, it bugs me. Every four years, it is announced. I don't know whether I should go on with this. I mean, I mean, how would you like it if, if, if Stan Laurel, you remember of Laurel and Hardy? All of a sudden, in the middle of a film, walked out to the front of the stage, took off his funny little therapy, took off his rubber nose, and said, now look, folks, now you're all out there having a hell of a time laughing at what this big fat slob is doing to me. Funny, right? Well, I'm going to tell you how it feels to get kicked in the 
rump by that guy. Do you know that we did that last scene 23 times? He kicked me in the rump 23 times, and each time he did it harder. Why? He hates me. I hate him. That's why I keep doing what he thinks are dumb things. I'm trying to get back at him. Okay. All right, uh, Oliver, let's get back to the film. Now, would you like that? No. So I better not tell you what really disappoints me. No, 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 you don't want to know. I'll go ahead and boo. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me that you're sitting out there booing, yelling, hollering, tell us. Because you know what's going to happen? The minute I tell you, then you're going to be mad at me again. You say, what does he tell us that for? Why does he bring all, his, all that stuff out? Why? Because you wanted it, you dummy. That's why. Remember, you asked for it. Or I'll tell you what it is. Every four years, no matter who the president is, no matter what party, he makes an announcement. What does he say? Well, for the next eight weeks before we take office, we're going to comb the country for the best man that we can find to head up every department. We are not concerned with parties party labels. We're looking for the best person that we can get in every department. We want, we're looking for the best men in America, the best peoples. I don't care whether they're men, whether they're women. I don't care whether it's a grape. The point being, we're looking for the people that are the best qualified to be right here running the country. Now, don't they say that? Yeah, how'd you like my overall president son, son right? So, what happens at that point? You notice what the key word was? Call. They're going to call them. Every four years, I wait for the phone to ring. When I look at some of the dummies that do get called, half of them wind up in the can. Every four years I wait for the phone. I thought that it was going to be different with Johnson. I thought that it was going to be different with Kennedy. I had a glimmer of hope, even, believe it or not, with Nixon. I was not a Nixon man. But I figured you're looking for the best people. Now they have announced that they have completed all their calls. Another four years. Just once, I would love to have it. Just happened, you know, I'm sitting there in the office. I got my can of yogurt in front of me. All the offices in New York, by the way, now, for those of you who are not living in New York, come complete with 12,000 yogurt eaters. Everybody sits at his desk now and eats yogurt. Now, a lot of them can't stand it. In fact, half of them are dumping it into the, into the wastebasket behind him, you know, and putting waste paper on top of it. But you've got to eat yogurt to show you're with it in New York now. By the way, they're bringing out all kinds of great yogurts, you know. They used to be, remember, strawberry yogurt and vanilla yogurt. Now they're bringing out Jim Beam yogurt. Why don't you try uh, Shivas Regal yogurt? <laughs> Guaranteed 12 years. That's the day that yogurt will have come of age. Right, gang? Anyway, yeah, and, you know, for the other crowd, there'll be, you know, for the, for the crowd that likes to live its life in the pop style, there will be uh, Bally High yogurt, Thunderbird yogurt, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there, you know, I just love to have it. When all of a sudden, in the outer, you know, we got this girl, and it's just the phone. I can hear the phone ringing out there, and all of a sudden she says, uh, Oh, you got a phone call? I says, Yeah. Yes, you have a phone. You'll never guess who it is. I say, Who? Figuring, of course, there's always trouble. Her face is ashen. She's scared. She says, I'm putting it through. It's a call from... This Shepard. This here's uh, the president-elect Shepard, and uh, 
Our scouting teams has been out looking for you. We've been searching the country for a man just like you. Your name is Gene Shepard, is that correct? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Spelled with a J. Uh, we, we had a little confusion over that at first. We had a little confusion over that at first because we figured that the name of uh, Gene there uh, with a J, uh, you might be uh, filling up one of our minorities, you know, actually, uh, a woman or something like that, but uh, we ain't going to let that hold it against you. As president-elect, I vowed to the people all over the country that I would look for the best men. And our teams are marching across the country, looking and looking and searching in every nook and cranny in this great country of ours. Now, you know, of course, my name is Jimmy Carter. You know me. I'm running for president. Remember that? Jimmy Carter, I'm running for president. You remember that? <laughs> sure do, Mr. President. Oh, no, no, no. Just call me Mr. President-elect. Just call me Mr. Pre Mr. President-elect. I'm just a little simple peanut farmer here, but after all, man does the best he can, and I, I've been thinking about having you down here for talk. So could you get on the next plane, drop in down here, and maybe you and I can come to some agreement. We'd kind of like to have you work shoulder to shoulder with us, bring this country back to country that should be. And there I sit, a call from the president. Well, it's gone again for another four years. Never happened. I I'd love to run a <laughs> I really would. I can see myself now, for example, running the FCC. Man, I'll tell you, that would be a jumping commission. You better believe it. I, I, I think the first thing I'd do as FCC chairman, I would call a high-level summit conference with Kojak. <laughs> I mean, you know, we would discuss views. And then I would have a high-level conference with uh, Beretta. They'd come in with the cockatoo and we discuss communications. Oh, it's four years, again. Why do I dream like this? I mean, you know, there's an old Russian slogan. Ever hear of it? The old Russian, it's not really a slogan, it's an old Russian maxim. And Khrushchev used it occasionally. He'd say, old Russian maxim say, cream rise to top sometime. They didn't understand what he meant by that. I did. The key word is sometime. I repeat, all Russian slogans say, cream rise to top sometime. Well, it depends, you see, sometime, whether the males are working. I think, you know what I think? I think, I, what I really think is that probably at least three presidents have tried to get through our switchboard. And have found, like everybody else, forget it. See, that keeps me going. That keeps me going. And we've tried every kind of system. We've got Centrexes. And in fact, you know, we have, a, we have such a great system up here of switchboards at this station that at one time we were getting all the calls for the welfare department of Albuquerque. Albuquerque. All these guys were calling up and yelling at me in Spanish. And I was giving them all the welfare they wanted, you know. I just said, okay, fine, your check's on the way. You gotta go with the system, you can't fight it. You know, for over three weeks, we were getting the calls for the repair department of Bloomingdale's appliance department. And I told everybody, we were fixing their coaster. It's okay, the toaster's on its way. You gotta go with the system. I'm waiting. It's going to be a long wait, but it's only four years.